Now a nice and simplistic way of looking at the handstand is I can fall in two directions. So if I'm in a handstand like this, I can fall backwards to my back or I can fall frontwards to my feet. So if I use something like this in the middle, so if I kick up like that, place my foot on either side, if I fall down towards my feet, I hit there. And if I fall over towards my back, I hit there. So this is a great tool to help me stay in the middle of my window of balance and practice falling one way, practice falling the other way with control, and then slowly making that window bigger and bigger. So I'm increasing my window of balance. Now with that one, there's obviously a prerequisite. You need to be able to kick up to the bar with control. A lot of people are gonna get scared when they do that because there's nothing here and you could fall through the middle. So having someone to spot you into that position is really useful. And we also need to think about making the body that one segment. So you need to make sure that when you're in your split position like this, that is acting as one. If when I put my feet against the bar and I go like this and my body doesn't act as one, I'm just gonna collapse underneath the bar. So I want my body to stay as one piece. Another option would be to have two walls very close to each other. Now I don't have two walls here very close to each other, but like a thin corridor or something like that could work. So I'm gonna make another wall here using this rack. Now again, this could be a little bit sketchy. This is metal, it's very small, it's very sharp. So it's not the ideal setup, especially for the beginner. But basically if I handstand in this gap, so I need to work out how to get into it. So for me, I'm comfortable to do this but I wouldn't recommend it. And I definitely wouldn't teach it to a client, but you get the idea. If you use the wall over here, where's the wall gone? Okay, there it is. So now I can go on that wall this way, and now I need to learn to pull off this wall and then go over to this wall with control and then go back to that wall and back again. So now I can go between these two walls and slowly increase that range and control in the window. And then eventually I can move around in the window, but not touch the walls. So a setup like this could also work as well. So using two boxes instead of the squat rack, same principle, kicking up to there, coming over, finding this one. Not too much weight on it, because I'm gonna slide the box off, but then I can go between and increase the strength control and condition in between there. Now obviously, ideally that would be a fixed object and not something that can move. Now this idea changes a little bit if we allow the body to actually change shape as we do it. So if I put this box over here and have it this low, I could now go up into the position like this, walk the hands in, take the hip over, now I could lift myself up, Go over and again, look, I'm gonna allow my body to change shape. I've gone into an arch, kissing that wall, coming back, and then now kiss this box this way and go back again. So again, I'm increasing that window of balance, conditioning that control throughout that range, building balance and strength there to allow me to change positions. Now obviously as I take my feet lower down, it's gonna go more towards a press handstand. And the more I arch the body this way, it's gonna take me more towards a hollow back or a Mexican handstand. And I could embrace that even more and start maxing out those ranges. So I could go from this press handstand position, this side, and then go into the hollow back Mexican to a target that side, and again, whoo, whoops, ignore that one, work between the two. So kissing there, coming back up, going into extension, hollow back there, and back again. And then you just keep decreasing the heights on both sides, where you can still show control until you get to a point where you're reaching your max on both sides, and on one side it might be the floor, so I can go press from the floor there, but this is restrictive for me from a flexibility point of view. I've got a bit of strength in that direction, but I don't do much backbend work I should do to make this one much deeper. But you will find people that can go all the way to the floor on this side, and also on that side. Now, if you're new to this one, I'd recommend that you have a wall behind you. I'd use ideally a soft box or some soft mats. Kick to the wall first. So place your hands down there, kick over, find the wall, and then you can step down to the plate height 
and you can play with trying to come off from that position with control. Not only like that, I'd also recommend that you kick up and then when you come off, you pull off into a freestanding handstand show control and be able to ideally then go back to the box for repetitions and control before you start to decrease the height. Same with this one, play around with a height, maybe go single leg to start with, come on and off the wall, play with both legs, and make sure you have a safe exit plan for whichever one you're gonna use. So have a look around your gym, your training space, and play with some different ideas that matches your setup, but more importantly, your ability and skill set at the moment. Let me know if you have any questions. Check out the website for coaching, www.paultwyman.com.au, and I'll speak to you next time. Thanks, guys.